SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. I'm Leona Starowitz, and I work at the National Science Foundation as a program director um, for uh, an area, the topical area is um, biophotonics, advanced imaging, sensing for human health. So the acronym is BISH, B-I-S-H. Um, I started here just about 10 years ago. I thought I'd be here two, three years, but um, <laughs> I stayed a little bit longer. Uh, and I, I came from the Naval Research Lab. Prior to that, I was at the Night Vision Lab for five years, and then I joined the Naval Research Lab. Initially, I did work actually on some uh, powerful eczema lasers, gas lasers. Uh, but then I started focusing more on the more compact lasers, such as solid-state solid lasers. And um, uh, it turned out that uh, uh, one of the other areas that were very important in terms of laser work was the eye-safe lasers, uh, not just for laser rangefinders, but even at the high energy, in, in the high energy, um, uh, in terms of safety for the human individuals. It was important uh, to work on uh, lasers that were eye safe, for instance, in the um, one and a half, two microns, and three micron range. And I focused a lot of my uh, work in that area and um, uh, developed a lot of these lasers in terms of efficiency and power uh, uh, and in those areas. And uh, so that was. Uh, as I say, started in 71 toward the end of 78 and, and the 80s. It turned out that some other groups were interested in some of the lasers I was developing locally, um, uh, particularly the ones in the 2 and 3 micron range, in addition to some of the Osmer lasers, but in the 2 3 micron range. Um, and these were people from the National Institute of Health. Um, by that time, I had built up quite a big laboratory in terms of uh, laser equipment and lasers and different tunable lasers and various uh, CW and um, high power lasers, uh, at least high peak power lasers. And uh, it turned out that they, they felt that some of these would have some medical applications. And so um, they called me, invited me. Uh, and, uh, asked me to come there, but also they wanted to come to my laboratory to see if they could use some of my equipment. And this started a very long-term uh, cooperation with NIH. I had cardiologists, uh, dermatologists, orthopedic people, ophthalmologists. Uh, these were MDs and residents at NIH come over to my lab um, to use some of the lasers that, I, uh, that we had developed and had in my laboratory. So. Um, uh, it was interesting because I'd certainly learned a lot from them, and they learned a lot about the utility of, of these lasers. This was really a new field, at least for NIH, and, and of course they had people who knew spectroscopy, but they didn't have people um, who not only knew lasers, but also the detector part was very, very important. And uh, so they started asking me to um, actually be a reviewer for the proposal they were getting. Nobody really had an idea uh, of what uses it would have at that time, at least not the people that I, that I know. And I, I would say the, the really huge uh, change occurred in, in two, two areas. One, the, the tr tremendous amount of money spent by the government um, you know, for, for defense purposes and, and high energy lasers and lasers of any kind. And also the huge amount of money spent by industry in optical communications and venture capital. This is billions of dollars were, were, were spent on this. And the, the development um, was just outstanding. I mean, it wasn't even monthly. Every week it would be a new development in the, in the whole uh, optical uh, uh, laser area. But not just lasers, you know, just uh, and optics in general. A lot of us were very skeptical about the high-energy lasers ever being really 
we, a lot of us work, who worked on Star Wars, I, can, I don't want to speak for everybody, were skeptical from the beginning uh, about uh, the Star Wars program and high energy lasers. But we loved the, to do the work and a lot of the money was used, as I say, in my program ended up to be applications other than uh, Star Wars. I saw the, all these advances that were being done in, in optics and, and detection, uh, funded by industry because of optical communications and by the Department of Defense. But I didn't see that being um, permeated. I didn't, I didn't see that being done for medical applications. I saw a big hole there. The program grew very rapidly, and, it, and it initially it was just a solicitation, which is like a topic area which disappears after one year, but then it was made into a core program, and now it's its own program. So um, that sort of was the genesis of it. Now um, I think the satisfaction I get is really trying to do something that is really going to be useful and, and health-wise to benefit society. So if people are interested in the general area of biophotonics or have expertise in it, um, the proposals I would welcome would be biophotonics as applied to medical diagnostics, medical therapies, some other medical applications. That's what I, I'm interested in supporting.